This is DeliveranceMinistry.fm video cast number 58. Hello again, everyone. Welcome to another episode of DeliveranceMinistry.fm, where we give you proven insights about the demonic realm and deliverance ministry and even some Christian counseling topics so that you can wage spiritual warfare more effectively. Uh, once again, this is Dr. Don Ibbotson with Above and Beyond here um, behind the microphone. Joined once again with my colleague, Dr. Phyllis Tarbox. Woohoo! It's good to be back in the saddle here on this yeah, podcast. Yeah, we've, we've been doing some different things. We've had guest speakers probably do more of that. We're always looking for input and insights on the topics you'd like to hear about. So we'll continue to branch out into different areas, but um, uh, but we're back together again here doing uh, another podcast for you. And this, this the, the timing of this should be very, um, I hope, uh, should, should come out right, uh, should be coming around around the end of October, um, because we're going to be talking today about Halloween, the the, 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 the holiday, if you like, and kind of like Hall- Halloween for Christians. And like, what's our best response? How should we approach it? And yeah. It is one of those topics, um, even in the body of Christ, quite honestly, about how it should be approached, you know, mm-hmm. right? Some people say, hey, it's it's harmless, just dress up time for candy. We've So there is a lot of different views on it, right? Yeah, even in the body of as, Christ. Go out as a bunny, go out as a fairy, it's okay. We're not getting into the demonic or Superman side. Superman or something, right? Yeah, yeah. We can, we can put a Christian spin on it and, and make it okay, yeah. It is, and some people say it doesn't bother me. It's not real, and it's just you know they you know look look really just discount any spiritual side to it. So that's what we're going to talk about. We're going to share our perspective and, and some things about people I you know who who we've seen and talked to and just caught up in the demonic and occultic realm. And you know, is this an open door? Is this something Christians should avoid, or what's what should be our best response? So we're just we're going to give you you know really share our insights, and and uh, that's really the purpose of this of, of this podcast. And so um, I think in general, a good place to start is this whole notion of, the, of the, the times that we live, certainly in this country, is there is just a real fascination with the spirit. Oh, boy, like, I'll tell you what, it sure is. I mean, look at just look at what comes out in the movies or even on the Disney Channel anymore. It's got so much spiritism attached to it. It's it's overwhelming. Well, it is. And I, I believe, you know, at the core way God created us, we're, we're called to, to everybody wants to live a supernatural yes. life. There is a fascination, a legitimate fascination a desire. in the spirit, spirit realm to right. be supernatural beings. I mean, you see it even in these Superman movies and mm. Wonder Girl, uh, Wonder, Wonder, Wonder Woman. Woman. Wonder yeah, Woman, right? that's Wonder. that's what I'm aiming for. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> the, 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 just this you know, a life different on our own, really, what you call a supernatural life. And it can be, you know, that can be sound like kind of the fun side, super, you know, Superman and Superwoman and, you know, some of these other... Forget all the, the the band of what's the band of five or six guys. Oh, I know what you're talking about, but I don't know. I don't remember. Yeah. But you know, people guardians of the galaxy or something like yeah. that. Yeah, and so, but then there's the darker side of things too, and that's you know you can see the realm of demonic movies and certainly vampires. I mean, there's just a fascination mm. with that. Well, they they oversensualized it with like a lot of uh, relationship issues, you know, like love story stuff with the vampires to draw the kids in. I think that's it. And it's, but uh, you know, and uh, whatever the other dynamics at the core, people want to live a supernatural life. And Mm -hmm. I think as, as part of it, hopefully as believers, we need to understand we have been called to live a supernatural life, life in the spirit and using the power of God and signs and wonders and the, the, the power of God at work. So that's a very real, um, fascination or desire that people have. And if they are not getting it satisfied, in church and in, in yep. the Bible, they're they're going to look for it somewhere else. So there's there's a lot of that, obviously out in the world. Like you say, all these movies. I mean, we we love to be you know the, the you know and fear. I think people like to get sometimes just taunted or, or I don't know if taunted is the right word, but enticed with the thing of being afraid. You yeah, know, they like see, the adrenaline to flow. Yeah, it, yeah. I go through yeah. these haunted houses, and I know here in here where we are in Tampa, there's the Bush Gardens. They have these. Um, Halloween horror, horror nights. <laughs> oh, yeah, which season the night it lasts for a week or two in mm-hmm. haunted houses and mm-hmm. and you know and and I think so. Well, people... part of that is that thrill seeking part of your brain too. You know, it does it does want to be sense sensitized or overstimulated it, a little bit. It does. And I mean, in the natural, you can look at roller coasters. I mean, just something that's non non spiritual right. as roller coasters. I mean, 
part of the the, the thrill of roller coasters is the fear, you sure. know, that, that you get afraid. And so you get that. But in the spirit realm, I think we venture into areas that, that mm. most people don't know about. As we've That's talked true. about in so many sessions, there's a people don't understand the spirit realm or they or they think they do or they believe lies. Or as we've, like I say, we've talked about this before, they get their theology from some of these movies. Sure. And and the whole goal of a lot of these demonic mm-hmm. and horror movies is to, is to scare you. Yeah. Ooh, and, and there's some really gruesome ones out there too. Well, there are. And as we talk, I don't even go. We, and you and I, I know we don't go to those things. We're not we're not afraid of the demonic realm, but the, but you know the Bible makes it very clear: the eyes and the ears are the windows of the soul. They're kind of our gateway. So it's like, why would you, you know, offer up, you know, your your eyes and ears to potential uh, things of fear? Because people have been traumatized oh, through different yeah. things, and yeah. it, it does end up in demonic torment. So yeah. there is that fascination with the spirit realm that is real, and and when I want, every year comes around to Halloween. <laughs> and I think it, let's start off with, you know, giving kind of a short synopsis of of that, what we call Halloween and the history of it. So, yeah. well, well, the origin of it started, you know, at least as we know, it began like over 1900 years ago. It started in England and Ireland and parts of northern France, but it was a Celtic celebration of the new year. And I'm not sure that I'm going to pronounce this correctly, but it's Sam Hine. Um, which occurred in November 1st, and the Celtics and the Druids revered it, revered it as the biggest holiday of the year. And, you know, you'll see that over here. A lot of people will call Halloween their favorite their favorite holiday. They call it a holiday. And a holiday was a high holy day. But this emphasized a day that when the souls of the dead would mingle with the living. So that's That's scary. Celtic, that Celtic yeah. kind of so, yeah, mixed up, messed up theology right there. Yeah, indeed. indeed. Not Christ, not, not biblically centered views right no but it remained popular long enough until saint patrick and a lot of the other christian ministries who missionaries who arrived in the area they began to convert it over to a christian holiday um and um brought it into the church and used it with a christian christian twist so that paganism and christianity were brought together making it easier for the local populations to convert so you know there's another tradition out there too with the the druids they believed that that night actually they said november 1st that demons and witches and evil spirits freely roamed the earth um with joy to greet the arrival of their season you know and 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 it and the the demonic realm and the satanists all love this season in fact anton Levey says that he's really happy he's the founder he's the founder of satanism the, the church yeah. of Scientology, or church of uh, satan S- satan right yeah okay. but but he he says that um he's he loves that christians allow their children to worship demons well, at least one night a year that's what that's what he used to say but the anyway the this season the arrival of the season the long nights and the early dark days of winter the demons had their fun with mortals at night frightening them and scaring them and and it seemed like the only way um, that scared demons could escape the persecution of these the scared people could escape the persecution of these demons was to offer them things they liked at least this was what they said fancy sweets and treats and then to escape the fury of the creatures. Milky Way, Milky Way Milky bars. Milky Way bars, heat bars, yeah. Nice. yeah. Okay. <laughs> in order to escape the fury of the these creatures, and this is the part that I thought was fascinating, the human would disguise themselves, get this, as one of them, mm. and join in their roaming. Wear a costume. Yeah, wear a costume. And this way they wouldn't recognize the humans, um, you know, from a demon or a witch, so they wouldn't be bothered by them. So, so the, the idea of it was for them to uh, blend in. Mm-hmm. But over the course of history, Halloween's practices have really changed with the culture of the day. But the purpose was always to honor the dead. And it was always veiled in fun activities. Is that why the, I guess the preference, you see so many ghosts, right? Is that the nature of the people being dressed up even as sure. kids as ghosts? I mean, I'm mean, a child years ago, many years, and not being raised in a Christian family at all and no theology or understanding of, of God or, or demons is, man, there even then and probably still is, I would guess, a preponderance of people dressed up as ghosts or you see the skeletons, right? People Did you ever get dressed up as a ghost? I don't remember. I, I doubt it. I, don't I got remember. dressed up. My mom dressed me up as a witch at age five. Wow. Yeah. And yeah, so I see. But I think, you know, we were drawn into a lot of that stuff too. Right. And I was, as I say, raised in a very good moral culture, but not a Christian culture at all. I mean, there's no concept or understanding well, of the spirit more, side. I was raised in a good 
Christian culture, and they still dress me up as a witch. So I think you had a better foot up than I did. That could be. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I forget a lot of that stuff. So what I wore, I guess I have no idea. But mm -hmm. I don't. Um, but it was the same deal, you know. Go out door to door and just collect as many treats as you could. Yeah, it was all about candy. Mm -hmm. I mean, as far as a little person's mind, that's all I was. And interesting though, for me growing up, um, my brother and I always got sick on Halloween, and we could never go out. Mm. <laughs> So I think I got saved from a lot of it just by, just by God, you know? Yeah. But, but that's, you know, that's pretty much the beginning of, of Halloween and how it started. So, you know, it does have, um, that ungodly theme to it at its beginning, but you know, it was also called all Hallows Eve, right? Yeah. Who, where did that, uh, who, who caught, was that the, the Christian, the, 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 um, the Christian, Christian server, that's the name they, they put to it. All Hallows Eve. I don't, I'm not really sure, but that All Hallows Eve is, was really for a night of haunting and things like that. So. Okay. And that's where we get the word Halloween from. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you talked about the ancient. You know the festival of uh, of, of Samhain, and I can say I hope we're pronouncing that properly. I mean, even because of that, and the mix over time, how it's just become sort of socialized. There's a lot of um, you know, like we talked about debate in the body of Christ. Said, well, it's not that bad. You know, right. it's not that bad. And in fact, as we're preparing for this, I did a little research and I found some articles out there on, of pastors, ministry people, mm. making the case, trying to make the case. I believe in sincere, as best they could, that hey, you know, it's okay. Christians can celebrate. Halloween and and one of the points that I found in one of the articles is that understand that the that the that the, what we call Halloween and the ancient pagan vest, uh, festival of Samhain which which you mentioned are mm -hmm. about, they're they're not the same so they're mm -hmm. unrelated mm -hmm. those dates and times are not the same so I just I think that's interesting one people, day off yeah I mean I get right one day off no exactly but they'll try to disconnect the two and say hey it's it's really it's it's really not that uh, it's not that big it's not that big a deal and sometimes people will say well you know people will look at Christmas and Easter in, in, in the origins of Christmas well, December 25th and mm -hmm. we understand that has no connection with the birth day of Christ mm -hmm. and, and even Easter the days we celebrate that, that some of them had pagan connections but hey mm -hmm. we still celebrate those holidays mm -hmm. we, we we celebrate Christmas and so they well why can't we do it with Halloween so they just kind of try to, to discount some of that stuff right well I think you know in any any culture you know if you've got something that's embedded like Halloween and as big of a money maker as it is I mean there's a lot I think probably most of the revenue for candy sales occurs over Halloween period of time. It's a big money maker. You're going to have a lot of press mm. to keep it going. Um, and that the enemy is going to, I believe the enemy is going to fuel all that. So we can rationalize anything to make it okay. But I think at the basis of it, when you bring up Christmas and things like that, when we get together for Christmas, you know, I think as a Christian, you can separate it and say you're celebrating, maybe not the exact day, right. but we're coming together in love and celebrating Jesus Christ. Now with Halloween, What's the celebration? Is it celebration of the dead still? Is that at its root? Or are we celebrating gatherings and candy and where do people even view it as a celebration? I mean, at least at Christian, you know, in Christian world, we, there's some concept we can rally around Christmas, what it is, the, the birth of Christ and, mm -hmm. and resurrection. I mean, Easter, the, the, the death and the resurrection, we can affix mm -hmm. something to it. When it comes to Halloween, it's, you know, it's hard to spirit, you know, to attach anything Christian to it, right? Right. Because I mean, there is no real spirit. Con and, and then what you talked about, that the, the early the early Christians would um, kind Blend of in. inter <laughs> bring pagan holidays into Christian holidays, and I think to help, you know, promote right. the promote the Christianity in their view. That's mm -hmm. that's kind of how they do it. But, but, but you're right. I mean, Halloween is is basically it is um you know it doesn't have the same um emotional connection with people right in terms of anything biblical mm -hmm. and of course it's, there's no connection in the bible but but people once again many still don't see the harm and say hey right. we're just going out and we're dressing up and you know going out dressed as barbie or dressed as wonder woman or you know bunnies as bunnies and mm -hmm. and things that you know darth vader's that little kids are dressed up on hey mm -hmm. it's 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 not that big a deal, and I think you know for the I think a lot of people can get away with it, and I think that's what makes it okay, but not everybody does, and that's what makes it not okay, and we'll get into those. All right, I think <laughs> I, think, I think that's I think that's true. So, uh, and and you know some people I see it, I talk to you they see it and I, and I think they use it effectively. I know Christians and I know you know people who on Halloween like many people will just kind of. Um, Stay home, right? If right. you're if you're a Christian and you're older and you don't have kids, you stay home and you turn off the lights. Yep. 
or you're away from your house. And, I, and honestly, that's what we've been doing mm-hmm. a lot of times. We, if we're not out, most of them are not, we stay home, we turn off the lights. Mm-hmm. And people know, kids know not to come to the door. And I'm mm-hmm. just being honest. That's that's how we do it. Right. Other people will use, I uh, know people who are, especially those with a real evangelistic yeah, yeah, yeah. trust. Some, some of our heart, good friends. <laughs> your friends who love the Lord, they will... Um, sit out there and they're and we're in florida you know so it's warm enough they can sit out there in their lawn chair at the end of the hall uh the driveway and people come and they got a basket of candy there and they'll give or they'll give them something but they get a chance to evangelize to or give them tracks or a little bible yeah, or, or something yeah. right and mm-hmm. just not you know just i think i've just done, done in love and say hey no here's some candy but you know and try to speak some of the truth and that's and that's one response well i think i think you've got to infiltrate um, you know, this mountain of Halloween, you know, and you, you, if that's that's a good way of doing it, I think it's a good way of doing it, getting out there and just bringing Christ in the middle of it and, <laughs> and invading the darkness with light, too. Well, it is. And, and some of it is, you know, the audience listening to it is many of you, if you've got if you're older and you don't have kids, you have one set of choices. But if you're younger and or you have children mm-hmm. of normally what we call Halloween age, I mean, you're torn with, hey, should I take them out? Mm hmm. Right? Oh, Is it yeah. okay to take them door to door, or um, or do we do something different? Now, many churches um, have an alternate an alternate event. They will I don't know the, the harvest festival, or they will mm-hmm, call it mm-hmm. something else. Some mm-hmm. uh, some ones I know the church I attend, they had something. At, um, gosh, I forget the name of it. Halloween trunk Halloween or something. Trick or Not, trunk, trunk, trick or trunk, trunk, trunk or treat, trunk or treat. Thank mm-hmm. you. That's it. It wasn't Halloween night, but it was the Saturday before Halloween. Mm-hmm. They would have cars set up at the church, and mm-hmm. people out of their trunk they decorate their cars and. Invite the neighborhood kids and mm-hmm. come around, and they give them candy, mm-hmm. and so kind of an alternate event for mm-hmm. kids. But but even many churches I know, especially the larger ones with the resources, the facilities, they will have a harvest night, even Halloween night. So the kids yeah. go to the church and they celebrate. They have some sort of a heart. They have a uh, you know whatever you know. It's been a long time, so my kids are older, so I can't speak to recent firsthand experiences. But I heard many that they go and they they have games, you know, mm-hmm. the board games or little things that go around, and they get candy at some of these mm-hmm. things as an alternative. Because the kids, so the kids don't miss out. Because you know the kids in school, right? Sure. They go. To, they talk about Halloween, you know, and I think well, I, well, I didn't go to Halloween. I don't believe in Halloween. Yeah. So they, at least they can give them some sort of a tool. Say, well, no, I got some candy. We just celebrate it differently. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think you know, I think. I think I'm torn on this because Halloween night, the actual night, is a high night where the witches and the warlocks do release a lot of their curses and a lot, a lot of, I would sense that out wandering am- amongst all of this, there's a lot of spirits of fear and a lot of demons that are out there in the midst of the Halloween celebration. So if you're, if you're out there celebrating, you know, and this, a lot of this comes Kim, if you read anything about Kim Daniels out of Charis- Charisma Magazine or anything that she has on Halloween, you'll you'll get a whole litany of this. But but that's a night where there is a lot of stuff going on in the spirit realm. So you're saying organized like organized cults and Satanists yeah. are doing proactive kind of ceremonies Curses. and curses. They're doing that. That's, yeah, they're okay. releasing a lot of the spirits. So then you got to wonder: is it something you really want to volunteer in? I mean, if you're if you're going to be a skilled spiritual warrior. Certainly go to a church, cover yourself with the blood of Jesus and take authority that way. But just to aimlessly go out and wander around on just a harvest festival night with your kids and not be proactive on it, I'd be a little concerned about well, that. Are you talking about being like going out on the street? Or is he yeah. talking about doing it? In, like if it's a church or in a church, because those are options, right? People can go out and say, I want to pray the blood of Jesus and go mm-hmm. around with their kids. Mm-hmm. And or like I say, they can say, well, we're not going to participate in that. We see the dangers in that potentially. Right. And so we're just going to go to our own little church building here yeah. and have our group of people there. Yeah. That. Well, I think, you know, if you're covered under a church and you, you know, the prayers out covering, but I still have an issue with that night. You don't want to be out with the, the night, night. Okay. the night itself. Um, I think like, you know, what you said, you know, have it on an off night, definitely provide the kids an alternative. I mean, yeah, sure. They, okay. they don't want to be deprived, but, but you don't really want them out there on that night. I don't know. That night bothers me. And I have personal reason for that, which I'll share, but but yeah, the night of Halloween itself is. Well, why don't you go ahead dark. and share that? Because as you can see, there's there is great debate and passion people in the body of Christ. I and mean, I don't know. Mm-hmm. I don't have a strong. I just you know there, there's if we can agree that you know 
God, Hosea 4, 6 says, God's people perish for lack of knowledge. Yeah. And I, what we don't know can kill us. Ignorance is not bliss. And mm -hmm. so for every person, at least if they understand the spirit realm, the spiritual dynamics, then they can choose and decide sure. and, and in favor and faith and do what they want to do. And we've mm -hmm. discussed some of these options, like staying inside, not taking your kids or going to a church thing or, or doing something on mm -hmm. a different night. There, there are different options, but, um, but yeah, I think this would be a good time. Why don't you, why don't you kind of share your own share experience? My, share my Molly story. Well, you know, I've got two daughters and one of them is a real pioneer and the other one's very sensitive in the spirit realm. And when, when I would take them out, um, they're only a year apart, I would dress them as bunnies and Hawaiian girls and little, you know, all sorts of little not scary things. Um, but I would still take them out on Halloween. And because it was something that I grew up with and I, when I missed out a lot on it and I, when I was like the kickoff to the holiday season, everybody looked forward to it, it as a big night. We got all excited. Um, but my little one just never bought into it. Um, she just wasn't now the older one, she'd want to go in and touch the dead person in the coffin in the people's houses on trick or treat, you know, night. And, and she was, and I was like, yeah, let's go, let's do this. And she'd go in there and get the candy. And the little one would stay outside just shaking in her shoes from the time she was about three years old. She was not having any part of it. And she actually looked at me one night and asked me why I took her out. Do you not like me? Do you not love us? And I thought, what is wrong with you? Why can't you just be like a normal little kid? Well, my daughter, as we know now, can see lots of things in the spirit realm. And I think the, when you have a gift like that. So great dis discerning of spirits. Very outrageous. discerning. Yep. She can see things in the spirit realm. And um, when you have that gift when you're little, um, the enemy will use it to scare the living daylights out of you because mm. he wants to shut it down. So she saw a lot and she would not go into these places. Well, one year I got her dressed up like a bunny, you know, very easy. We happened to wander into a house down the end of the street. Well, I didn't know. Guy was a warlock pretty well-known one she <laughs> girls walk in he's dressed in his warlock warlock garb meets him at the door the older one thinks oh that's nothing just blazes right by him i'm a little like whoa but my little daughter is freaking out because she can feel the spirits that are already circulating in that room and she could probably see him and he looked right at the little one and said "Ooh, just in time bunny stew now he was joking around, but she could she could sense it, right? Well, from that moment on, when we got home, that spirit of fear followed her. She was frightened. Now I put her in a situation that she shouldn't have been in. She was out there on a night like that, where all that stuff was swirling around with ghosts so and ghouls. Before you and, knew any of this stuff, you oh, just, I, based on what you'd done in, as a child yourself. Yeah, and I took her out years after that too. I mean, I didn't, I don't know, but that was the gateway where that spirit of fear came in, and it followed her, and it came home. Mm. And it tormented her for years. It spoke to her. It taunted her. You know, we would think, oh, my gosh, will you please buck up, you know, be a big girl. But she just couldn't. She couldn't sleep in her room after that night. She's always crawling around on somebody else's floor. And she'll tell you to this day. She knows that's exactly when it started and it followed her home. So, I mean, you know, we, she's been through deliverance. A lot of that went with all of that. But, you know, when that you, was definitely an open door. In the it was a that. huge open door. Children that are sensitive like that are going to pick up on it. You know, they're going to pick up on stuff like that. So I think you have to just be really careful about having them out there because it is a high fear night. Just in general, that's the way people treat it. Like, you know, let's see how we can shock you. We're jumping out around corners and things like right. that. You know, like you said, people pay for that. But yeah, for years I didn't get it and I just discounted it and I wrote it off. But boy, I'll tell you what, when I when it opened my eyes to spiritual warfare and I began to get the understanding uh, and then I started sharing it and, and her acknowledgement was like, well, yeah, because I've been going through this for years and you've mm. just ignored it. And I felt awful. You know, because I just really thought there was something wrong with her because she wasn't following along with culture. And, you know, a lot of my a lot of people that I know right now say the same thing about me. Well, what's what's wrong with you? You have this whole idea about Halloween. You don't let you think it's wrong. Well, I'll tell you, that's why, because I had a lot of years yep. of my daughter being tormented by 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 straight up demons that followed her home because they knew who she was. Mm. And I had her right out there in the middle of it. So I opened up that door for her. And that made me feel awful. <laughs> well, yeah. And it's like now, and years later, you have more insight, obviously, you know, on, on different levels about the, the spirit realm that, that you didn't have before because of the work that you do. We do well, yeah. And I mean, I don't, I'm yeah. not, I don't have self-condemnation over it, but I think for parents, and I had no knowledge because I was trained that way. Right. But, you know, okay, it's okay if you don't know any better. 
But if you now you do know you're charged with the information, are you are you going to bring your children out randomly amongst the crowds? Let's say take it away from the churches. Just let them go out on the streets. Are you going to do that? Because I think you're really exposing them to a lot of things that they don't need to be exposed to. Well, exactly. I mean, we are not even going to get into it here, but the whole notion of, of, of jack-o'-lanterns and pumpkins, and you see some churches even selling them. I mean, there's a whole history behind those as yeah. well, right? There's an, an occult. So it's, but people rash like, well, we're going to put a smiley face on the jack-o'-lantern. Yeah. And so, I mean, you, you can really see this whole topic is just one where there's just, over the years, there's just been so much mixed, you know, the pagan side of things, and, and then there's an occultic, dark mm-hmm. side of it, and mixed in with, you know, Christian christendom and and involvement over the years i mean people will look back and say hey you know a lot of the a lot of the um the uh, disguises or things people made have always haven't always been evil i mean sometimes mm-hmm. they've been pretty light like you said you took your daughter on a bunny mm-hmm. years ago now it's lots of years ago so mm-hmm. but it's still the same thing i think people and, and you can see we're just you know we're probably answering asking more Questions are that we given answers here because, as I think you said, Phyllis, it's a good thing. This is where the time to think. We want you to, th- to right. pray about this and get discernment where you are in your own family, in your own life. If mm-hmm. you're old, younger, especially, and you got kids, what are you going to do? Mm-hmm. What are you going to do? And mm-hmm. I think it behooves yourself to to really do more research, do more reading from good sources. I mean, you know, we've got some good articles. You've written some articles oh, yeah, before on Halloween. Yeah, a couple of them. Probably write one another on one. Yeah. yeah, so, and there are other good, reputable places out there. And I think you, you can sense our view is very clearly that you should, that it's it really is a night to be avoided. It just you shouldn't be taking kids out. Our view, taking kids out for candy. I mean, I'm... I may be a little, you know, view of people do things at church, a harvest festival. Person, I don't have an issue with that, but but you do, and it's like yeah, that's fine too. You know, you wouldn't, and I, and I get it. And it's like, you know, what 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 do you, what do you do? And but I think just to say, well, it's not a big deal. You know, some people say, hey, we shouldn't be afraid of the devil. You know, Jesus defeated him, and he's under our feet. And some people say, hey, we should just mock the devil. We just mock Satan. It's like you know, you know, I think that's just such a wrong thing. We yeah, we don't yeah. mock. Satan. Jesus did not mock Satan. No. He did not. He 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 dealt with Satan. He conversed with him. It's not a day to mock. I I think that's just not that's that's not a thing to do. So going out, say here, you know, celebrate Halloween and kind of in Satan's face. I mean, I think that can come back and bite you. Not well, from a position I, of fear, but of say of wisdom. I had a, I had a client that came in with that problem. You know, they they brought their little boy in with a whole big big problem of fear and they were trying to get down to the root of it they could never figure out what in the world happened to him and he as he was explaining he he told me he said that my parents took me out trick-or-treating when i was little to a nursing home and there was a there was somebody dressed up and they had long fingers and long nails and he was describing this demon that they said was tormenting him nightly and when we got down to the root of it they said, oh, no, we never, we didn't, we didn't, no, that didn't happen to you. And he, and he said, no, I remember, remember you got me dressed up and he knew the outfit he had on. He was only like oh, four or five years, oh, he was like four, four or five. And he said, and then, and then that thing came up behind me and that's what's still coming after me. And he wow. described it to a T. So evidently something, you know, just clicked probably a with shock him. to his parents too. They probably were No, aware. they were so surprised, but it frightened him. And that opened the door with the spirit of fear so that a real spirit of fear could come now and begin to torment him. Right. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I guess I do take a bit of a harder stand than it. I, I, I do want to say one thing, though. I do believe that as the church, we have to get out there and invade this mountain. So if you represent the church, you're not, you know, getting dressed up in garb and that, but you're get but you're going out there and representing the church and you're infiltrating it, then I think that's fine. You know, like if you have, if you have plants at some of these places that are like our, my church, for example, will go out to, um, a, a festival and instead of, and they'll have a prophecy station where people will, can you come in harvest festival, yeah, Halloween festival. Yeah. They'll actually, they'll have, they'll have biblical prophecy and speak blessings over it. So I, so I think you have to have a presence. I mean, we just don't want to hide and ignore it. That's how we've gotten into the trouble right. we've gotten into. But I just think with the children, you just have to be sensitive where you're going to drag them. Well, I, yeah, I think that's a good point. And I, like I say, I have great people who, who, who are, once again, typically not, they're older people and necessarily have kids. They, they'll they see the night as a night to evangelize or, yep. or you could go to these events, these Halloween events, if you mm-hmm. like, and set up these mm-hmm. sort of these outposts, mm-hmm. if you like, and, and right. administer people who do it in their in their yeah, their homes and do different things mm-hmm. as a witnessing thing. And they're covered mm-hmm. and protected by the blood of Jesus, operating in faith, not out of fear. That's great. But mm-hmm. I think you're right. I think with the kids is what we lose sight of and mm-hmm. because and I, and I know I know you're right it's we've seen it so many times so many well 
they're just kids. What do they know? Many kids discern things spiritually. They have, it's a gift is that they, they, they have. They 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 haven't. Yeah, they're needs to be matured, but they yeah. have it in, in abundance. And they do see and hear things in the spirit realm that many adults don't see, and it's mm-hmm. and it's an open door. And so, if you if you're listening to this, and some of this is new for you. Pray about it, meditate on it, especially as we're approaching the Halloween season, and prayerfully consider what you should be doing with your kids. And right. I think the thing you hear is taking them out in your neighborhood, going door to door, is not a good thing. No, it, it, that's a, that's our view. And once again, we're, we're sharing that, sharing some insights here. Um, we we hope, kind of hope, we've like I say, we've probably asked, asked, you know, stirred up and raised more questions maybe than than some of the things we, we we've answered. But hopefully, it will stir you up to start determining and prayerfully considering what you're going to do differently this Halloween. Any any final things that or add on additional things that you want to share? Yeah, for us? Halloween um, haunted houses at the fire stations, all those kind of things too, even off nights. You just have to you have to really think about what you're doing with, with fear. What what images are your children bonding with in their eye gates that are going to be because, you know, their little minds don't have these pictures yet. And these pictures of these demons and people, the way they get dressed up and go out on those nights, they've developed those costumes based on something real. These movies have been based on things that have been experienced in the supernatural. So so the enemy is going to jump in and just really torment from that perspective and send real demons in. I'm I'm, I know a lot of people are just out there dressed up and that but the enemy is going to capitalize on that because he wants these little kids and he'll use every opportunity he can to envelop them with a spirit of fear exactly. so be forewarned fear and and sometimes like i say a fascination with the occultic realm the oh, well, ground. people look at movies and some of these things yeah. it develops an unhealthy fascination yeah. and they start to want to explore that and yeah. and the way to learn and, and understand better the demonic realm and the occult is not to read and watch occultic movies or demonic movies or read the book of satan <laughs> okay it doesn't, it's not helpful we need no. to get knowledge and insight from from good solid sources but you're right the the, the common pathway is fear right. and and, you know, like I say, people need to be alert and aware of the fact that the spirit realm is real. The warfare is real. It's not just hope. It's not just make believe. And, and we just, you know, we can just, you know, just blissfully glide on by. I it's think. a door. It's a, yes, a huge open door. So, mm-hmm. well, I hope uh, you've enjoyed this podcast. Like I say, I think, um, you know, it'll be a, it's a good, you know, coming up when this airs the first time should be close to uh, uh, Halloween this, uh, this year. So um, as always love to hear from you on other topics. We put these together, try to put um, topics together on things that you're interested about. Uh, please email us with those and get on our website and say hey and we've gotten it in fact we'll probably be doing one not too long down the road about those whole and maybe a more insight about horror movies and and uh, videos and things Mm -hmm. because that was a suggestion that came in so we're going to do that Um, if you like what you're hearing um, from us we'd sure appreciate some feedback Um, these um, these podcasts are on iTunes. The station is deliveranceministry.fm, deliveranceministry.fm. Look for us there. Um, please leave them, listen to us, leave a review for us. That helps us get found. We'd appreciate that very much. We have our websites, of course, andbcounseling.com. I'm sorry, andbcounseling.com. And then above and beyond Counseling Academy andbacademy.com that's the training and educational side of things where people can get their christian counseling degrees and deliverance ministry training our resource library you can sign up for really on either website totally free resources um, articles podcasts slide shares videos got a lot huge presence on youtube uh, as well we have a channel there so just a lot of things and then of course we have our products training products for deliverance ministry training uh, spiritual warfare videos um, children's deliverance ministry a boot camp and whatnot are on the academy site as well and then also if this has been a blessing to you and and you uh, just want to inc- um, help us expand the ministry of deliverance Um, help us if you will by becoming a warrior partner and on the counseling website uh, andbcounseling.com there's a there's a thing an opportunity a bar there to become a warrior uh, partner you can give monthly give one-time gifts to help us develop more resources to help um, subsidize as we're able uh, people who need our services so it uh, it takes financial resources to expand the kingdom of god it really does so if this has been a blessing we would appreciate you doing that um we want to thank you for listening as always we hope that that this topic has been a blessing to you um and we will look forward to talking to you again very soon god bless you